Sacred here with Sacred Art of Gaming. I'm excited, things are coming together. I'm starting to see my, my vision eventually get to you guys, but it's a, it's a work in progress, we'll get there. But for now, Sundered Isles just released some of their, uh, it, it's not fully released yet, they're still working on it, editing it, but for those of you who may or may not know, there was a Kickstarter for Sundered Isles, which is like a Star Forge spinoff, which is like an Iron Sworn spinoff. So for you solo gamers out there, it's coming and it looks cool. It's if I were to put it in a in a bucket, it's going to be heavily on like pirate Caribbean uh, adventure, right? But it's not just that. So like you could have like airships and stuff. But at its core, I'm going to say that it's it's going to be on adventure. But what we're going to go over today are three things to be excited about for Sundered Isles. Let's go. Mm. So we got the PDF here, Sundered Isles. I'm digging the artwork on a lot of this. They They've gone the color route as opposed to what they had for Iron Sworn, so similar to Star Forge in that regard. I always kind of briefly look at the, the breakdown here. Keep in mind that this is subject to change, of course, but the three main things that I want to talk about, I'm first going to start, first I'm going to start with the setting. The setting is really cool, and a lot of this, you can see this is a massive this is a massive book. It's like 260 pages. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck for this. A lot of the stuff we're going to review is kind of in the beginning, because if you're aware of how Iron Sworn, these type of games work, it's a ton of oracles and moves and stuff. That's going to be towards the end. But the setting, really dope. There's They kind of go over the setting here initially. Your ship, command and crew, supply at sea. That's all awesome stuff. Uh, and then they kind of go over, yep, you got your oracles and stuff. And we're going to we're gonna start with a setting, and then we got two more things after that. Let's take a look at this. More beautiful artwork. My God, look at this. This is awesome. So, yes, a world of wooden ships and iron souls. This is like a little intro here. It's an expansion for Iron Sworn Star Forge, tabletop role-playing game. It offers guidelines and tools for exploring a world of fantasy seafaring adventure using the Star Forge system. The things that you need... Okay, uh, this is kind of somewhat similar to, it's like a solo version of Power by the Apocalypse in a way, if you're familiar with that. But this kind of goes through some of the stuff that you can use. Now the setting, this is the thing that I'm first excited about. You've got the features of the Isles, the ships, the clashing factions. Um, but here we go, the two moons, Cinder and Wraith. That's, uh, that's pretty awesome. So Cinder's the red red cooling flames moon we have here rate the silver blue uh and they kind of talk about this intricate dance of the two here um the skilled mariners learn anticipate and adapt to these forces and yeah i mean you can really play this is the kind of stuff i love about these games is that they give you a really interesting nugget but they don't completely flesh it out that's kind of for you to do and i i love that that's the uh, that's the sweet spot for me give me a little something to build off of and then go crazy the people of the isles often refer to the moons as the twin fates so you can treat your challenge dice as manifestation of the fates that's it's pretty cool i like that um we, one can be cinder and one can be wraith uh this kind of plays into spoiler alert <laughs> the curse die that we're going to go over later which one of those would be cursed? I'm not sure. I want to say maybe Wraith. And then we have our, our regions here. It kind of breaks down. And then forging your version of the Isles, right? So is, is magic a part of it? Um, do you have like crazy leviathans and stuff? All things that you can, you can go through like the truth questioning that they have. That'll help you build that out. Or even just build it out your own in your own like world building. And here we go, the character pillars. So you're Iron Sworn, you're a seafarer, and you're a rebel. Uh, and there's there's shifting scales on this too. So if, if you're not aware how Iron Sworn works in Star Forge, essentially you are putting your hand on iron, 
and basically saying, this is my iron valve. This is the thing that I swear to do. Not doing that thing has consequences. It will affect you spiritually or, or potentially even affect your relationships. Um, so you're, you're a seafarer and whether it's sea, space, ocean, you're a rebel, might be a pirate, insurgent. And then I love how, so this kind of seems, oh, this is kind of vanilla when you read it initially, right? And then you start to go into these images right after they briefly discuss character assets. Sunder Isles is going to be similar to Star Forge in that you kind of, you can, you don't have to, but by default, you start with a ship of some kind and then you can have like upgraded modules for it. Building your asset deck. Yep. So I thought this was interesting. So you kind of get a breakdown of like what some people in this might look like. So this is kind of cool. And then what is this? This construct harpooner? This is awesome. Uh, this blade master is also looking really cool. When you gain command of the ship, envision its nature and assign a max integrity. So this is the type of uh, almost like light, medium, heavy armor. I think a similar concept is being applied to the ship. And the, the fiction being an important part of that. Okay, yep, so they're going through the different ships here. So you could have like an entire fleet if you wanted, and then you'd have to you'd have to keep them supplied. So you could, I wanna wait before I draw my comparison, but I'm just gonna say it. There are some things in here that remind me a little bit of like Blades in the Dark and, and uh, Band of Blades in terms of the factions, but also like maintaining supply for like a campaign essentially. Oh man, this is so cool. This. <laughs> I think a lot of people would consider these type of games like rules light, generally speaking, just because of how the combat is. But uh, you'll see that this kind of shies away from that. But when you have diagrams like this, you're kind of like, holy shit, we're kind of, <laughs> we can get a little crunchy here when we're breaking down all the different pieces of the ship. So yeah, man, we're really taking a little bit of time on the setting. <laughs> But there's a lot here. So you have your command and your crews, which has a little bit of that in Star Forged as well. Envisioning your crew, leading the crew. There's crew assets, but this is slightly different because this isn't uh, by default in the same exact setting that Star Forged is. When I think of Star Forged by default, you can kind of do like uh, Firefly is, is kind of mainly what I think of. But you have a lot of different options there. So, whew, man, yeah, this is breaking down some of the assets and the modules, but this is what I'm looking for. Supply at sea, managing supply, and there's these different moves here and how that's going to affect your supply. Tracking it, and I believe, ah, yes, here we go. So this is, this is a big part of the setting to me because you're, you're kind of like, based on what you saw, you're a pirate, you're a rebel, um, wealth and treasure, you're essentially going to be like going to places looking to fund your next expedition to another place. So getting treasure is going to be a primary motivator for you. And then this is gonna go through like how you're going to acquire the wealth, updating your ledger, converting wealth, how you would deal with the upkeep here based on how big your ship is, the fleet of ships, your, your upkeep, really cool stuff. Cursed riches, love it, love it. And then navigation, right? Traveling by sea, but then they also go over traveling by land. Charting your course, yeah. Whew. Yeah, I'm trying not to go through the entire book here. Visiting the settlements, but yeah, a lot of... Aha, okay. That was a lot for the setting. So the other second thing... <laughs> that I think is a big deal that's super exciting for this is going to be the naval encounters. And here's why. You might just, okay, yeah, naval encounters, whatever. But they really break this down. This gets kind of potentially crunchy. And you, I'm sure you don't have to go to this level of crunch. But look at this breakdown here with the naval encounter summary. This page breaks it down beautifully. So, and based on what you've seen in movies and stuff, this tracks. This 100% tracks. So, so the sighting phase, this is kind of whenever, you know, you see a ship off in the distance and, you know, you're kind of letting everybody know, is this a friend or foe situation? I don't know. So you're going to discuss the environment. You're going to identify the sighting, 
Introducing details of the opposing ship. Are they friend, foe, or neutral? Set your orientation. The star on the counter has you forewarned or in the thick of it. And then envision the reaction by deciding how both sides respond. This could potentially be really cool, really tense. Uh, I mean, you, you may not want to do this for every single time you're <laughs> you come across a ship. Because I imagine you're going to... This is going to be a process. This is going to be probably the equivalent of, like, doing a full-on, like, war or battle scene in, like, Iron Sworn. So, then the approach phase. You could do this in a single move, facing danger, secure an advantage, or you can resolve as a scene challenge. And so, you kind of have your, your sliders in terms of, do I kind of want to gloss over this? And, you know, this is a thing that happens, and maybe we almost want to, not quite to the level of, like, a montage, but we don't want to stress too much about it or we can really break it down minute by minute on the complete opposite side of that spectrum. And then there's your engagement phase. Decide your engagement and jet objectives. Vision your opponent's goal. Sound the alarm. Envision an act. Command your ship. Overcome dangers. Manage the changing tide of battle. And resolve the engagement decide what happens next there's also um <laughs> i guess depending on how you resolve that engagement this boarding phase may or may not this isn't a requirement right because uh, you could just potentially sink that ship but they're setting the scene envisioning how it happens which if you've ever played like assassin's creed black flag this was always awesome to me <laughs> and uh yeah it's this could be really exciting, really, really exciting stuff. Decide your boarding objectives. Are you going to, you know, take somebody hostage? Are you just trying to steal their treasure? Are you trying to kill everyone on board? What are you doing? Uh, stand ready as you enter the fray. Join the fight as you board the enemy ship or repel boarders. Yeah, they could be trying to take your stuff too. And then end the fight. So this is a really interesting twist from traditionally what I what I deal with with like Iron Sworn. Um... Just because you're like in the ocean or in the sky. Um, and then you're potentially, you know, taking what you want and sinking it or dropping it out of the sky. Uh, and this kind of goes into like if you want it to happen in a blur. And this further breaks down each one of these phases, which is really neat. Uh, you don't have to go into this amount of detail every time. But it breaks it down for you if you want to use it. So that is number two, naval encounters. And the third, the third thing is going to be the curse die. Oh, let's just take a look at this image. <laughs> this is great. All right. Um, we're almost there. You know what I just realized? I misspoke and I apologize. And I want to fix that now. <laughs> this curse die is specifically for the Oracle rolls, which is a D100. The Twin Moons are for your challenge dice. So those are two separate things. Your challenge roll that you're gonna be doing is going to be your D6 plus your stat versus the two D10s. This would normally be a D100, but you're also adding in this other D10, which will be the cursed die. So, a lot of these tables have a skull icon, like for example, here we have coastline aspects. There's gonna to be tons of tables. Of course we love the tables, but we expect that from this type of game. So uh, this is the features of a nearby island coast. So you can kind of, you know, whenever you're looking down the sites, trying to figure out what is it that you're rolling up on when you see land. And maybe you roll Maybe roll a 75, so that's going to be sea caves. Okay, sea caves kind of cool, but maybe you have like weird technology and supernatural forces. So you also have the cursed die, and we said 75. So sea caves or waters clogged with debris. <laughs> hmm, okay. I'll be honest, that's not the most exciting... <laughs> That's not the most exciting cursed one that we have here. But as you see, a lot of these are not like super crazy. They can be ominous, like 
waters clogged with debris. So, and you could easily combine the two, you just gotta feel it. So maybe those caves are clogged with the debris and what's, what's in that debris, that's for you to go in there and find out. You could be thinking, hey, let's go check that out. Um, there could be some good stuff in there, some treasure, but what caused that? What caused that? And uh, may maybe, maybe there isn't anything good in there. Maybe there's amazing things in there. You gotta play to find out. That's the beauty of this game. So yeah, curse die. Love it. Love that option. Because I'll be honest, a lot of times when I'm rolling on oracles anyways, um, every now and then I roll something that just does not work. It doesn't work. And I'll either roll again or I'll just look at like the next closest option to it. Or maybe there's a, a different table that I was like, ah, maybe this table would work better than this one. And I'll just kind of look at that and stick with the original roll. So yeah, that's super neat. So those are the three things I'm super excited about. The setting, the, uh, excited about the setting. I'm excited about the naval encounters. I'm excited about the cursed guy. Bonus thing I'm excited about, which maybe this is not, I think it's cool. Cause I did touch on this before is the factions. So I mentioned Blade in the Dark. I love how their factions work. All right, here we are. Factions of the Isles. This is the bonus thing I'm excited about. It kind of walks through how you can reveal the factions, the faces of a faction, so the people you're gonna be interacting with, what you might think of whenever you're dealing with those factions. Faction projects and using campaign clocks. I mean, come on, that's Blades in the Dark all day. All day! A faction influence grid. I'm not going to lie, I kind of get excited about this stuff. And then you've got your faction relationship maps. I personally love with Blades in the Dark whenever, you know, maybe you're dealing with this faction and helping them actually hurts these two other factions and now they like you less. I think there's going to be some of that here, um, which I love. And then they kind of go into uh, some more tables here with societies and organizations that could be related. So... This has been Sacred with Sacred Art of Gaming. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know what things down in the comments. What are you excited about for Sunder Dials? I know we kind of talked about the setting, really went to the moons and stuff. We talked about the curse dive. We talked about the naval combat. A little bit of the faction stuff here. But uh, yeah, what, what's tickling your fancy about Sunder Dials? Are you getting Sunder Dials? Did you back it on Kickstarter? Maybe this convinced you to, to grab it whenever it drops. I don't know. You tell me. So this is Sacred signing out. See you on the next one. Happy gaming.